uh, artist, uh, so I make uh, photography, video, sculptures and live performance. So I make artwork which usually you would find in art galleries or theatres. Um, probably through the traditional route, so I did art at school, and, uh, GCSEs and A-levels, I did a <coughs> fine art degree um, and then I, from graduation, just started my life as an artist really. So uh, making work for and exhibiting in galleries uh, since 2003 and then maybe about four or five years ago I also started making live work for theatre. So now I kind of sight American for yeah. Um, well they range for lots of different things really. So uh, the a recent sculpture that I made uh, was uh, my dad and I, we took my first car which is a 1988 Ford Fiesta, it's kind of old banger and we transformed it into a transformer robot uh, kind of by cutting it, uh, dismantling it, welding it together. Um, so this is a sculpture which exists in a kind of a, a squatting position. Um, I made a, uh, I did a, a, a talk on a website called TED which is about identity uh, which I do in partnership with a Taiwanese dancer and we kind of play with uh, language and identity using English and Chinese, uh, Mandarin um, and movement and uh, we kind of play with uh, authenticity so uh, what it is that we own in terms of language or identity. Uh, some of it is, yes, yeah, some of the Easter stuff has involved Spider-Man, uh, they haven't for uh, all the previous years but uh, I think I've drawn Spider-Man a lot because it's one of the few superheroes which uh, covers every inch of his skin. So, you know, as a brown kid growing up, you don't want to be called the Indian Spider-Man or the Asian Spider-Man, like you would if you dressed up as Superman. With Spider-Man, you can just be Spider-Man because you're entirely covered. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm interested in what it talks about in terms of identity, uh, in terms of a lot of kids, uh, you know, wanting to be these heroes and not being limited through wrestling. I guess it's something that uh, I feel like is uh, on my mind a lot. You know, I guess it's, you know, with the world being much smaller now through the internet and, and how communication works through Facebook and Twitter and all this kind of thing, you're constantly, uh, not up against, but sort of place against different people and different identities and different ethnicities and languages. And so, uh, and abilities and all this kind of thing. And, and you know, body image in uh, our society and all of, all of those things kind of combines to kind of have you always thinking about it in some ways. So I, I feel like it's a subject that's always there. And then uh, personally for me, uh, because I've grown up born and raised in the UK, my folks are from India, uh, it's something that has always been quite uh, integrated. When I was growing up, um, there was only four channels on TV. And so uh, when you're at school, if you come in the day after uh, a night, um, everyone's seen the same movie. You know, so we would, uh, you know, discuss this movie, do impersonations of it. So it felt like there was a shared culture there, or a shared uh, reference point. You know, there was no internet, and uh, invariably all of these movies were American Hollywood. You know, we used to love Eddie Murphy films, and uh, you know all these kind of things. So uh, it's that part of the culture because we had less Americana coming through then. Those sort of things were always the things that we deemed to be cool. You know, and everyone wants to be cool. And so, you know, I guess this is why uh, that sort of steeped itself uh, within us in a way. Um, so, yeah, so American Boy is kind of a reflection on, on kind of the, the primary influences uh, culturally that would have affected me. Um, I mean, I guess I feel like everyone has a different relationship to their heritage and what they feel like their heritage is. Um, so I think, and it also depends where you mean integrated. I mean, if it's integrated in the UK, I feel like... Um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's an individual choice of what um, what parts of your heritage or what parts of the surroundings that um, resonate with you and which which um, which you kind of abide by in your life. So for me, for example, um, it's not necessarily rituals or prayers or this kind of thing that I would consider my, the strongest part of my Indian heritage. Actually, the strongest part of my Indian heritage is, is hard work, you know, kind of this working class ethic all my uncles and aunties have worked in factories and everyone works with their hands. So this is something that I can really, really relate to. So this idea of working and hard work is something that I relate into, I guess, what my life is in the UK. I guess so. Even though my work starts very culturally specific in terms of my heritage and my life in the UK, uh, I guess the idea is that it should, that the hope is that it reach, reaches much wider. 
And so this is the reason why I uh, have a lot of humour in the work, have a lot of uh, cultural references which are outside of anything English and Indian, such as uh, Chinese Kung Fu or Hollywood um, Americana, uh, to kind of reflect accurately that we're kind of made up of millions of different things, basically. So I guess in my work, you know, part of my mission in a way, because my work is predominantly seen in a, in a Western context, is to kind of try to de-exoticise myself. You know, if I'm a brown guy forming in the UK it, and, and, I'm, and I want to reference stuff to do with identity or perhaps some of my heritage, it can be easy to put me in a box and say he's talking about something Indian or British Indian and actually I'm not interested in that. Kind of, I, I want to kind of uh, get rid of those, those definitions. So in a way by bringing in these other references which are equally or even more important to me in terms of uh, American culture or uh, you know, Chinese Kung Fu or whatever it is, I guess my hope is that it, it kind of uh, works towards very freeing tricky. myself. I think this idea of trying to be unique. I uh, don't know if it's something I've prescribed to. It's, uh, and in terms of being yourself, I, I still think this, this, imitate, this idea of imitating someone uh, and different things to become yourself, I guess, it, it, I, I, guess I, meant, I guess I don't necessarily mean it in terms of we're made up of lots of other things and we can't be ourselves. I think it's okay to be made up of lots of things. And I think that uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, this idea of authenticity is quite a complex uh, idea and it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we are, you know, original in the sense of uh, some saying and being something that's never been said or been before. Uh, I think it's kind of completely valid that we're made up of lots of different things that we acknowledge it. Uh, and kind of, I think it's, for me personally, all of these, th these things feel like who I am and kind of who I am individually is uh, reflected in, in all of these things that, uh, that, I'm, that I, I'm interested in and that I put back out into the world that should be more diverse. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I guess it's, I guess if there's, if there's any message, I guess as the title suggests, who am I? Think again. You know, I guess it's I, I like the idea of kind of uh, um, you know pulling the rug out from under our feet in terms of assumptions we might make about somebody in terms of how they look or how they sound. And, and it's not necessarily just it's not about preaching. It's not saying to other people, I think you should look twice. I, you know, it's, it's also a message for myself. You know, it's, it's part of human nature. We all do it. We kind of make judgments about how you can look or where they speak or the accent they may have so I guess it's about trying to uh, unearth, unearth a bit of that and not to settle on any uh, set prejudgments. It is actually one of my favourite places yeah so I think I feel like Manchester because uh, I grew up in Bolton just around the corner every time I come back to Manchester I, I do love performing here and, and it feels like the audiences are kind of uh, don't know more up for it somehow and I'm not sure why that is like I'm not sure whether it's just the audiences here or whether it's something to do with a lot of my work, I do talk as me, so whether it's to do with uh, a local accent uh, in the work or a certain sense of humour that kind of translates particularly in the uh, Next, um, I'm, I'm working on a series of film installations over the next two years which are going to result uh, in, a, in my first feature film. So I'm, cu I'm currently in the, in the comms attorney to, to make that. Uh, happen and then alongside that also I'm developing American Boy 2, a sequel to this performance. Mm.